Uh, hey, can you can you see it now? Right. Now, can you see where it says join the live? Go to the one where I'm live now. Now, you see anything down at the bottom that allow you? Okay, you clicked in. Okay. Okay, click it. There it go. It should be at, there you go. <laughs> okay, let me get some lighting here. You're right. And let me, let me try to get, now I've been doing all of this. And I didn't even uh, put the put the phone on the stand. You all, greetings, you all, uh, coming on with my exclusive interview with gospel artist Ernest Pugh. Um, thank y'all for being here <laughs> with us. We both. Uh, we both learning this technical stuff all at the yeah. same time. But we got we made it. How are you? I'm good. Good, good restful good, day good, from good. the travel. Glad to be resting for a day or two. Okay. Oh yeah, that's right. You were doing a lot of um HBCU. Yes, a lot of homecoming events and stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let me uh I got I'm trying to get me a, a stand like you, how you got a nice stand. I was trying to uh, uh, hey, work get it out one so that uh, so that I could halfway be um, professional <laughs> <laughs> and all that good you, stuff. Okay. You're true to it. You ain't new to it. Yes, 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 yes. You know, I should. Oh, now, I don't have one of those. Now, that's what I need. Yeah, this here. Yeah. I, um, uh, one of my, um, one of my supporters blessed me. And, uh, she, uh, well, I can't say nothing about her. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> she said she wanted, uh, she said it was time for me to, uh what is it uh what what they say upgrade your game up that's an upgrade yeah, yeah, yeah now that that's what beyonce yeah. said did you go there see her oh no i didn't get to see her yet but I, she was here in houston though and she shut the city down i that's that's what i know but i i didn't but well, you know i know you gospel so i didn't know if you oh, oh yeah i would have went look i would have went i finished listen i was there Oh, you I'm, went to I'm it? glad. I, I hate our hands to go one time. Okay. <laughs> uh -oh. I think it was a good show. I mean, it's, it's entertainment. I like all genres of music, but that and that show, and I can't wait till we get to the theater, so I get to see the, more than just snippets. Right. Okay, why is it? That one. Why won't it stay still? It keeps wanting to rotate on me. Mm. I may have to hold this phone in my hand because this, I don't know why the this The whole is, time? Yeah, because this thing is rotating. Okay, let's see now if I sit it. Let's see there. All right, okay. All right, <clears throat> greetings. Oh, I got this thing on my head. <laughs> Okay, you all. We're we're actually we're gonna. Can y'all hear me all right? Can you, can you hear me well, Ernest? Yes. Okay. How's mine? You can hear mine. Yeah. 
Okay. I can't. Uh, I can uh, hear you, and then I think I can turn my. I think I can turn my volume. Uh, uh-uh, I'm turning it down. Oh. Okay. How's that? That's good. Okay. Excellent. Well, first of all, let me tell you, um, and greetings to you all. Uh, you're watching Obnoxious. Uh, okay, there. there. Now, y'all can send some stars and some good old uh, uh, cash apps and all of that uh, <laughs> while we are on here. Um, I, I am, I'm really excited about this opportunity, um, to, uh, to sit and to have a, 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 a candid conversation with, um, a gentleman that has been the subject of, um, of a number of posts of mine. Um, and um, uh, uh, some, as my career was developing, as my popularity was uh, developing, it was, and his, um, it was some um, hot rumors and conjecture uh, that surfaced. And um, I reported on it um and so i i don't i don't know if it necessarily impacted you impacted your life or your career or uh, things of that sort but we can certainly uh we'll certainly dive into that um and uh you know just sort of lay our cards on uh, cool. on the table. Now you know, Ernest, we have been talking. I think since June or July, yes. um, back and forth. Um, I uh, I really I like you as a person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and that was one of the things that uh, your new label <laughs> or your new uh, manager um, said that if we probably had a conversation, we would probably actually um, like each other. And and so I I really felt, I walked away from, um, I walked away from that conversation that that we had sort of all on the three-way and you know, I felt a lot better because you brought clarity uh, to some stuff that, you know, that I had taken and ran with as gospel, you know, that um, that was not uh, necessarily uh, true or, uh, or the case. I, you got your glasses. I want to get my glasses <laughs> so I can see these comments. One second. One second. Let me grab my glasses real quick. <laughs> Not the glasses. I, 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 you know what? We, we, we get up in age. Yeah. I, I just look at them and be like, okay, I, I'll go back and, look, and, read, and read them at the end. Ernest, I'm normally far, uh, far more professional. Oh and, yeah, and uh, and ready. So look, this is I'm just going to tell you. Oh. I'm going to just break that. Go ahead. <laughs> you gonna bring the Gucci so glasses out? I okay. Do a little something. <laughs> I, okay. Okay. So let me go to tell you. So I was. You know how you get at the last minute. You probably. This probably comes over you too. At the last minute, you like, oh, I want to do this, or I want to do this to enhance whatever I got right. coming up, or right. whatever I'm doing. You're perfecting. So I was sitting around, and I was on the phone with with, with you know one of my uh, fan supporter, just you know, uh, chick that 
that has my back. And I was like, oh, I really need to do such and such, such and such. And um, we just came through battling an eviction with the studio. And so I had to get all of that taken care of. And you know, I'm transparent, y'all know yeah. I don't mind. Thanks to all my fans and friends that contributed and what have you. Cause you know, it's six people and you know this cause you have a team. Yeah. So um, I had been, you know, robbing from Peter to pay Paul and what have you, but you gotta keep, I gotta keep those folks paid Absolutely. so that they can run the thing. And then, you know, a lot of people, you know, your haters and trolls, just cause you don't see me in the studio does not mean that it's not up and operable and running. It's for these rappers and for these other podcasters, they end their, their recording. So anyway, we have, you know, was robbing from Peter, pay Paul and trying to make some stuff happen or whatever. And, and so, you know, things was, it was tight. And I was just telling her, I said, well, you know, I really want to try to make this, you know, a little bit better. I'm not going to bring the, um, until you come next month, we'll actually be in the studio and my, you'll see the full, you know, for camera shoot and all of that. But I said, well, I'm not going to do all of that. And, just kind of getting out of the woods to jump <laughs> yeah. and, and create some more debt. Keep it so I, but I said, you know, I need to get a stand and really, you know, really need to make this as nice as possible because this is something that a lot of people are looking forward to. And Absolutely. we got a lot of hot topics and, and issues that we're going to deal with. And so um, just wanted the presentation. Yeah. And man, got on seven five eighty five to head to the place to get this stand, and my, my truck went boop 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 boop. And so I said, "Well, wait a minute, what is going hey. on?" Artist, I ran out of gas on seventy five eighty five. You probably really just did. saw those stand in the you real thing. You was determined. <laughs> Where's the truck now? In the, par in the, in the uh, <laughs> uh, parking deck. Okay. Oh no! So we uh, uh, anyway, um, they came the he the hero or whatever you call those people. They came and they gave me some gas. I got went on, got the gas, went on and got the stand. So anyway, that's why I'm not. Uh, You've had a day. Yeah, that 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 ate up that additional hour that I had that I was you know going to use uh, to get. Um, you know, perfected and, and, and prepared. So how you doing tonight? I'm good. This is a restful day. You rest your voice, rest your body, just hang out. So this is a perfect time to just really, you know, just unpack some things. With you. That's good. I, uh, again, I, 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 I totally appreciate it. So let's, let's, um, for, I, 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 I thought your, your story to me was, rather interesting. You're originally from Memphis. Mm -hmm. um, you're from what, a family of seven or? or... No, I got like 10 sisters and uh, two brothers. Oh, 10. Wow. Yeah. He is <laughs> real They were working it out. Yeah. They were working it out. Being fruitful and multiplying. Right. So, you have to have a choir. Now, but you know what I thought that was, what, what I thought was interesting is that uh, even though you were saying that your mom had discovered that you had this voice and you had this musical talent, but it seems like you kind of, when well, you went on to the military and you had, yeah. you, you had a, what, 15, 20 year career in the military? Yeah, total, um, total of 20. Total of 20, yeah. active duty. What? Army, Navy. I was Army. I did 15 active, and then the rest of it I did. The other uh, years I did in the Texas National Guard. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, but you did you ever, were you ever deployed? Were you ever out? Oh, yeah. yeah, I actually did two, tour, two tours of Saudi Arabia um, in 90 and then again in 92. Oh, so wow. I had a nice little, 
Oh, that was amazing. Cause that's how you really can, you know, when you don't have the four walls of the church, you got to have that thing down on the inside, you know, that thing right. called faith and be right. just fearless, but know that God got you and you don't know how you're coming out of it. But you know, you know, your faith took you there, your purpose took you there. And so you don't have mom, dad, you don't have a, you don't have a support system other than these strangers that you're trying to survive with. So it made me grow up real quick. And that was early. Like I joined the military at 18. I was married by 19, ready-made family. So, you know, you learn life. Life just hits you like boom, 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 boom. And now, you got to just go. ready-made family. So you married a girl that already had children? No, we, we like kind of, you know, already had the baby coming. And then by the time I joined the military and turned 19, I had a family. Like most people, they kind of get a chance to get married and, you know, we're going to plan. Well, no, now, you know, they don't even get married now. Right. You, know, you just <laughs> they grew were, it and have a baby. But you had, you had, you know, practiced in it. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so at 19, you was already, I mean, wow. You know what I mean? I just, that. Yeah. I, I, when I talk to people and interview people, um, sometimes the, the courses of different individuals' lives is so fascinating yeah. to me because um, at 19, I was still running around in college, being right. silly, not, you know, focused on responsibility, probably like some people like yourself that um, is, you, you, you know, with a family and a wife and you know, serious obligations and and responsi responsibility. So you did that tour. Um, how did, was it once you came back or you were back home? How did the music career, because not, no offense, but you're, you, you were, you know, a solid seasoned adult male by the time you actually, you wasn't like some of these, you know, 19, 20 year olds, right. you know, or like a Kiara Sheard, you know, grew up right. singing. You, you know, you were a seasoned adult man Absolutely. when when your career uh, started. So just tell us a little bit about that. How did, what was the course of action? How did that come into play? Well, you know, growing up there, you know, on the outskirts of Memphis, you know, um, and, and coming up in the Church of God in Christ, started off Rosemont Church of God in Christ, and eventually with Bishop Patterson there, music was just always a part of the family. And it was not like it was a career or you were an artist. You would just, when they say get up there and sing tenor, you just get up there and sing tenor. But Orlando Draper kind of discovered me and he felt like I had more than just um, you know, the ability to sing tenor. He was like, no, you really got something. And I was like, man, please, I'm going to be a cop or I'm going to be a fireman. And so I took all of that with me into the military. And when we would have the hardest times, I would always be somewhere singing. And so the people would be like, in these uniforms now, we right. would be in full worship, full praise. They were like, you're a church kid. You're going to say, I wind up just always getting picked to lead worship. Well, fast forward to when I got out of the military, I kind of had already started pitching demo tapes and uh, I already had a manager. I was I was doing all of this while I was in the military. Well, when I got out, you know, I had to, I didn't want to try to impress people to go get a, a record deal before my kids got out of college. So my daughter was literally at Prairie View when I recorded that first live recording in 2006. My daughter was a sophomore at Prairie View. So I, I, in my mind, I was like, I'm going to raise my family. Okay. I'm going to do this military career, keep this, this, get this retirement going. And then music will always be there. Not knowing that I would ever be doing music full time. That was never my dream, never my aspiration. I just didn't never want to depend on the church, mm -hmm. you know, to have to eat. Right. And it just happened. It just happened. How day. is it? Why do you say that? Was it? An experience, or did you see that it was fickle, yeah. or what? What was the well? Reason? I watched my parents struggle. I watched uh, fellow uh, friends of mine struggle, and when I say struggle, have a minister of music job, and the contract may say you're gonna get five hundred a week. You may not give it a hundred and fifty that week. So right. you had to think of how you were gonna buy clothes, how you were gonna have bus fare, how you were gonna eat. And I was like, man, this music thing is just not stable. Okay. And then I was a part of Orlando Drake and Associates like before it became a big name, like before they signed the first deal. Um, I was at the very first rehearsal and he was just telling me stories about how he would do a workshop and slave over that music and pray over that music and he wouldn't get paid. And I'd be like, man, 
You know, I mean, how you gonna survive? Yeah. Orlando, Orlando, Orlando Draper was yes. Just, I mean, he was I, I, I'd, I'd like to think about. I, I just wonder where he would be had he lived. You know, Ooh. he would be. He would definitely be huge because. Yeah, I mean, we, we, you know, they talk about Ricky, but that Orlando Draper was... Yeah, he influenced all of them. Ricky. Uh, yeah, um, he Mark paid the way. And, and, and it's unfortunate he doesn't really get the credit that he... he doesn't get the credit. That he really deserves uh, yeah. uh, for that. So you were with him, with, and, uh, and then did you... Is that when you kind of, like, branched out or you started... Doing, you did the solo project, or how did the project come into play? The project uh, was kind of like a. Um, I was on the road doing a stage play with friends of mine like T. Hatcher Hicks, uh, Sam Logan, Tony Grant, and we would have free time. And so we were like, we had Valdez Bradley there, who was the producer. He was Kelly Price's producer at the time. And he said, "Man, while we're on the road, we're gonna do a demo tape." This was in about 1998, 97, and by it took me all the way to 2000 to get that demo going. Well, I used that demo to pitch. Uh, record deals. And so Vicky Latalia was one of the first people I hit up and she said, uh, he can sing, but I, uh, I don't think he's a solo artist. So, you know, I had eight companies to turn me down. So I was thinking, I'm going to go get me a good old church job, get me a job when I get out. Um, and that's what it's going to be, not knowing that God has something totally different, you know, in store for me in terms of when I, 2006, I recorded that uh, Worshipers Perspective and wrapped up, tied up, tangled up got into the hands of Brian Spears and Brian Spears wound up signing. I had done a full record, but I had a, I didn't have the money to market, to promote or to distribute. So I was selling that record out of my car. And Brian Spears said, you singing a Thomas Whitfield song. He's from Detroit. Let's talk. I said, I got a whole album. So he signed me. And then about two years later, Kerry Douglas, I had already recorded this record called Rain On Us. I had done the, the live recording. I had mastered it. I had mixed it. I didn't even have the money to get the CD cover done. And Carrie was in town doing a concert, a, a, a concert with James Fortune. I was on stage singing a duet with Kelly Price, Nobody But Jesus by Vanessa Bell. We got done. He said, man, you got any solo material? I said, I, I recorded an album. It's called Rain On Us. He said, let's meet tomorrow. And I want to listen to the whole record. Got in the car. He heard the first song which I wanted The Great I Am to be the single. He was like, no, 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 no. We're in an economic downturn. We need Rain On Us to be the song. Okay. I was like, man, listen to some upbeat. I want an upbeat song. You know, it's song. He said, listen, if you don't, if I don't take this record to the top of the charts, you don't even have to sign a contract with me. Mm -hmm. Eight weeks later, that record was at the top of the charts. And that's how it all kind of, I came into to prominence yeah, because it around was like you came out of nowhere and then, you it, the, the the that song was like number one for Tell I don't know because our uh, me and Vicky she was like I don't know who <laughs> holds out to be number one for this this number uh, of weeks it was just like it's you know just week after week and I said I know I said well who is the dude you know or whatever she said some guy from Memphis or somewhere it, it, you know. <laughs> And um, and then it was Ernest P. Um, and and we started uh, started uh, um, you know hearing about you uh, far more. So now you when you got out of the military, were you were in? Uh, did you set up shop or uh, in D.C.? Yeah. I I went there with the um, intentions of going to Howard University. I wanted I wanted a master of divinity, and I wanted it to come from Howard University. But uh, Byron Cage, uh, my friend, um, had been listening at me on on the road doing these stage plays. He said, "Pew, you really should come and work with me at this church. I'm at a new AME church." I, and I, I thought you were still with Eddie Long in Atlanta. He said, "No, I'm in I'm in two places. I'm in D.C. working for this church. I want you to come be my praise and worship leader." Now he's like the prince of praise, so I'm like, "This has got to be a setup because you're the prince of praise." Well, he knew that that big record was getting ready to come with Gospel Century, and he needed to have coverage, I guess. So in 2000, I moved there. But at the same time that I was working for the church, I was getting my Master of Divinity from 2000 until 2004. I graduated. Richard Smallwood was actually in my graduating class. Got that mm. degree. But I continued to work for that church for 10 years. Is that right? And that 
that was a very good undergirding. You because know, that was, was that's Ebenezer, right? Yeah, Ebenezer. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, so that's when I first, I guess it was, um, that was what, 08? 08. Oh, that's when the notorious blog hit. So let's discuss that. <laughs> that part. Let's di let's discuss. I I got well by that time by '08. You know your career had really taken off. You you know had gotten uh, known and um, you know really popular, famous, uh, especially famous in in the. Um, gospel arena and then you know we always have a lot of uh uh females uh that that you know are in gospel that can sing but you know that number is always narrowed and yeah. quite smaller amongst the um amongst the uh the men right so oh eight i was contacted um that I, 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 I might have been a little more notorious then. <laughs> but I was contacted actually by uh, six guys. Okay. It, it, was, um, it was six. Um, I was trying, I was actually on the site and I was trying to find the original um, when I was when I was preparing for this, I was trying to find the original. I, I, I found subsequent stories, but not that uh, not that very first initial one. How I'll, I'll, I'll tell you because I write a lot and mm -hmm. I've covered a lot and I've exposed a lot and a lot of people. So a lot of the, a lot of them I may not necessarily remember. Or can pull all of the nuances um, out of it the way that a person that is about you 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 probably so so what did I say or how did the the O eight blog um, uh, come out and what was said um, uh, <laughs> they said spit it out um, what was the because. It was six guys. Mm -hmm. They um, the allegation was that uh, there was a profile that was on Adam for Adam, mm -hmm. an app called. Uh, or at that time, I think that yeah, that was that was '08, so that was before apps. Um, but there was a site and there was a profile that. Uh, it the 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 uh, guy the two the guy went to the house and came to my house. He he came to my house. allegedly came to your house. Okay. Um, you were heavier then. You know, we were both we were both <laughs> chunky. <right? laughs> well, I took out the military times, you know. Gym. So you 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 were uh, bigger. They had pictures. Um, you know, the, the, uh, you know, you know, partial, um, uh, face and, but he went to the house and he, it was almost like he described the house and the decor and, you know, like this extreme detail. And so when I was, you know, searching around and talking to other people, they were saying, well, yeah, his house does, you know, kind of look like that or it's kind of decorated that kind of way. Not that necessarily that something had happened with you and the, the, the guy, but that it, 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 it was it was some things that were lining up, so to speak. So what, what was going on in 08? You know, first of all, you know, and I, I think this is a great idea, you know, coming on the platform, um, I, getting the call. Yeah, I really appreciate I, it. I think this was good. Um, and I don't, I'm not trying to like clear my name, you know, I'm not trying to 
you know, any of that. It's really just giving clarity. I definitely want to give some substance and, and just put people in the context of what was transpiring back then. Another lens, another perspective. Uh, but what I will say that the parts of that blog that I can remember, because believe it or not, it was so powerful. It's some of it I can't remember, and I had to just kind of go back and read my journal. But that blog hit me like a, 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 a really like a, like a, a, a thing of rocks because I had just, and I'm gonna get to the story, but I had just gone through, I was on the road to recovery from my sudden death of my mom just months before that. And then an 18 year marriage that ended in divorce because of irreconcilable differences. So you're dealing with the death of your mother, the death of your marriage, and then you like the death of your ministry. And so it was unmanageable disappointment for, for, for the main reason is that the people and the haters who came for me really never heard my side of the story. And I was like, without any video of me doing anything salacious, without any really nude pictures of me, these people ran with a narrative. And watch this, the most devastating part was just days after this post hit the thing, my manager at the time, Troy Clark, rest his soul, he got calls from pastors promoters, ministers of music, and they were asking him to send back deposits. And I still didn't know the full, because I don't really go read that type of stuff when people send it to me. If I'm traveling like that, I'm trying to really just, you know, be focused on the stage. And so I never really knew the full details. And so I was like, send back the deposit. And I'm, and I'm not talking about a little bit of money. I'm talking $60,000, $70,000 worth of deposits that people asked us to send back because they felt that I was bringing discredit up on the church. Now, can you imagine? So I still didn't know. And then one day my daughter, um, who this just, it really just took her, it because she saw it when she was in college. So you can imagine the, uh, the, the shame of being on campus and you finding out this about your dad. I'd never had any of these conversations prior. So the point that I'm trying to get to is the unmanageable disappointment with trying to navigate being an artist, knowing what your calling is, and you got these voices in the back of your head saying it's all over, it's all over, it's all over. Well, um, I was not able to really trip on the money part because I, you know, when I think of somebody taking your ministry down, I'm not thinking of the financial aspects of it. I'm thinking more of, wow, I'm going to let God down. I'm going to let the legacy of my family down. My children are going to be embarrassed. Uh, I already have gone through a very public divorce. So, I didn't trip on the money because God has always blessed me to have. The music industry, and I have to just say this for the record, is not my main source of income. You know, mm -hmm. I have a 20 year retirement and a pension from the military. I've done stocks, bonds, and mutual funds since I was 18 years old. I got a master's, a PhD. I can teach, I can counsel, I can consult. But the thing that that is the people, I was saying to myself, who qualifies these people to disqualify me from doing ministry, even if these rumors were true. And again, no concrete evidence that the claims are baseless. It's, I, get, I understand the street team comes to tell you, but I don't remember a name. And I kept saying, well, who is it that's saying they did this with me? I want to sit with them. I want to talk with them. But my biggest takeaway away from it, Will, and I'm not mad. I'm not bitter. I'm not hurtful. And the way that you know that a scar is healed is when you rub your hand over the scar, it doesn't hurt anymore. So yeah. when we go back to 2008, my biggest takeaway is that this is not a, a personality. This is a principality. Because a lot of the battles and things that people say against you, they're more spiritual than they are physical. If it was easy as doing physical, yo, I would just roll up to them and be like, listen, let's, let's talk. I, I'm, I'm very good at confronting and confronting issues. You know, uh, and I don't want it to get physical, but if it does get physical, I mean, I'm ready. I mean, you know, I'm ready. But <laughs> right. I was like, the way that I want to deal with this is, I'm going to just go away. So when it first came, I went away, and I really went away to find out who these people were to say they had been with me. And I was asking around, I said, who is it? Because I'm very limited with people that I let come in my space. So I kept asking my team, I said, are there videos? They said, we don't see a video. I said, search Google. And all they kept getting was Will McRae, obnoxious. But I said, are there any pictures? Because I know me, I've never, ever, ever, I don't care how caught up I am. I've never wanted to bring discredit upon the body of Christ. Me, I'm nobody. But 
this calling that I have, nobody knows the calling that you have because when God calls you, it's not a three-way conversation. You don't know what my assignment in the earth is. And even if these things had happened, what disqualifies me from still affecting the floor of worship and traveling and doing And that's what I feel like these people wanted to do. I could not call you, and I want to call you so bad because I don't think you're a bad guy. I know how you get your money. I understand what a journalist does and, and what a blog does, the, click and the clicks and the views. This is, you know, this is how you make your money. But what really was the thing is I couldn't find a person who had, I don't want to say the balls, but that's the only word that comes, to just let me know, what, when did you and I get together? What, what is this about? And, I, and let me just back it up and say, and I'm not saying that these things did happen. I'm not saying it didn't. I'm trying to really not deal with that tonight. What I want to deal with is that when somebody makes those, those bold statements and use these disparaging comments about you should be man enough to come forward if you were with me which you claim you were what what is your where you are let's talk because you know i'm a public figure you know i got a family i was not the only one hurt my family was hurt my family my sisters and everybody sat me down we come from a very strict it brought it brought them to a place to where we don't know who you are right now and i'm like first of all these people are lying if they have been with me First of all, I'm gonna say this for the record: If you've been in my house, you signed a non-disclosure. <laughs> I've been doing non I've been doing non non-disclosure since 2000. If you come to my house and we just sitting on my car on my patio just chilling, you smoking your cigar and I may be I don't know sipping on me some uh, some wine. You've signed a non-disclosure if you walked in your house. So if this escalated to a court of law, I could pull you in mm -hmm. to arrest you. So so who is gonna who you know what I'm saying who's gonna put all that on the line for the sake of being famous on Will McCray's site? And mm -hmm. you're a coward because you never came for it. So but and I and one other thing I have to say because people watch this decline is the weight and the gravity of these accusations started to affect my health. And People saw the weight, it was rapid. I lost probably 60 some pounds. And so of course the rumors, oh my God, you know, he's dying of AIDS. And I'm like, son, the only AIDS I got is Kool-Aid, red Kool-Aid to be exact. Come to my house, I'll give you some. So I, the people watched me get slim and you know, people wouldn't call me. Churches wouldn't call me. They were like, oh, we understand you're sick. I said, I'm very sick. But what they don't understand, Will, I was battling. I, the reason I was so quiet and so private, I was fighting for my life. I literally had a feeding tube. I went down to 170 some pounds in less than 90 days. Nobody knew what was wrong with me. They told Byron Cage, the people on the staff at Ebenezer, he can corroborate this story. They said, if you want to see him, this is the week to go see him. He's so he's losing the lining of his stomach. It was the stress. It was the weight. It was the gravity. It was the hurt. It was it was the stripping away of people. It was the stripping away of just people who didn't believe in me anymore. And here I am at the top of a billboard chart with a number one song. And the, and the people are putting a question mark where God has put a period. And I was like, this is this is this is so to me demonic. And is this how I'm going to die? Because at that point, it would have been cool if, if the Lord took me and I went. It was so painful that it would have been much easier to depart this life than to stay and face these rumors. That's what I'm just saying. When somebody makes a powerful statement like that, you don't know the discredit that it brings up on them. I'm not concerned about another big record. I'm concerned really just about how I'm gonna make my departure. So I was, I was planning to depart this life before I was even 50. And I had to have people in my ear who had to keep reminding me of what my purpose in the earth was. And I, I broke down many times because I felt like I had let God down. I'm not worried about a name. I'm not worried about a title. And so 2008 is what, is what happened there. And I learned a lot. I learned a lot. And I learned that the people who wants to disqualify me should read the account and the story of the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul wrote over half the New Testament. Right. And the scripture is very ambiguous as it relates to what the specificity, what the specific issue, struggle, or struggle, or challenge that Paul had. Could it be that God, in all of his infinite wisdom and sovereignty, decided, I'm not going to tell y'all what he's struggling with. 
because you wouldn't be able to receive his ministry. You would go call Will McCray and blog on him and you would miss out on your salvation, your rededication, your membership. All of this because you're judging this man about the fact that he is a spirit who lives in a body and has a soul and may have had some proclivities. And so you hold, you're now going to disqualify him for ministry now because you feel like you're the sin police. And that is so unbalanced and so unfair. So the only thing I just say is go through whatever you're going to go through. It's not going to, it's going to come like it's going to devastate you, but it's actually going to elevate you. And so I don't hate any of those people. I love those people. You know what? My grandmom used to say, if you full of love and they full of hell, then you love the hell out of them. That's what I'm going to do because what people think about me and what they feel about me will, that's none of my business. Mm -hmm. Like I can't control what you think. We All can't. I can do is try to. We can't. We, 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 can't. we, we, we can't. And it, it, it's virtually impossible. The one thing that um, I've been in this game a long time um, and we said we were going to be candid. Yeah. I have discovered that the majority, whether people like to admit it or not, the majority of my um, stories and information, uh, Eddie Long died not knowing that, that the person that delivered that information to me was mm -hmm. right up on him and was working for him up until his death. Um, but they, it, 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 it mirrors R. Kelly. It mirrors Michael Jackson. Yeah. It mirrors all of these people that um, are huge stars and they have people that still want to be a part of the a part of the team. Now, I wow. wouldn't feel comfortable or right telling you that it was coming from sources close to you wow. and in your in your camp. And yet partially um, they probably had I'm I'm pretty certain a non-disclosure with you that, you know, because um, he was very paranoid that, oh, you know, I'm going to tell you this and I'm going to give you this account and this one's going to give you this account. But they were very, very paranoid that, you know, that I would reveal um, who they were. That, I want to you know. know who it was. <laughs> I know you do. Maybe, maybe offline <laughs> we can one day I have uh, some, some flowers. Have that, uh, have that conversation. Okay. But Ernest, I will say this to every rumor lies a little bit of truth. I agree. Some, some level, you may, you know, it, it, it may have been the confusion of, well, I saw them both at the hotel. In your assessment, what, where did 08 develop from? Did, did, did you perhaps uh, let your guard down, um, trust somebody, bring someone into your fold, uh, it, that it may not have gone all the way to a sexual situation? Because, you know, sometimes, and, and when you're popular or when you're famous, you know, sometimes people be infatuated with you and you just, you know, saying, oh, they're so-and-so, so-and-so over there. And I don't have those kind of feelings. But, you know, they're, they're hoping and praying and, you know, <laughs> wishing for the, for, you know, for the opportunity. 
where do you think that, uh, and, and, and especially in that particular mm -hmm. year, because yeah. we're talking almost 10 years. You're, we're talking about you, your album dropped, you was on this, you were soaring from 2000 until this came, mm -hmm. you know, um, and dropped on my desk in 08. So mm -hmm. wh what was going on there or who do you what, think what I, I, And I, I can pinpoint it. What, what I will say that being introduced not only into the industry, but also just being in, introduced into ministry, um, I was challenged with a lot of stuff. I was challenged with, I started drinking probably at eight. My mom had a bar at the house and I would drink. Around about 12, uh, I was introduced to, you know, marijuana. You know, I lived in the outskirts of Memphis in a little place called Chapel Hill. You could get weed before you can get water. And my sexuality was challenged. Okay. My sexuality was challenged, you know, while in, in the elementary school um, with teachers and stuff and with athletes. And what I would say is, you know, some of the tests I passed with flying colors, but a lot of the other tests I failed. And I never, I never stopped running to God every time I would fall because I just kept remembering my grace is sufficient. I knew you, I made you, I knew you was going to do this when you were formed in your mother. You know, so I, I had to quit beating myself up. One day I saw a scripture that says, you know what? A just man mm -hmm. can fall seven times in one day. Stop beating yourself up because the scripture magnifies the, the part that says, but he rises up again. again. The, enemy, yeah. the enemy has to respect me because I kept rising up again. Did I fall sometimes? Absolutely. Did I have some, some, some type of situations that were probably, uh, I had overrode the warnings and, and bound? Of course I did. On, in, uh, every, every time it happened though, I was not somebody I was like, I'm going to hide it. No, I was like, you know what? I, I, should, I should get this right because people are dependent on me, you know, to be honest and to stand in my truth. So did, did I let some people come in that probably were not really for me? But my love for them just made me just vulnerable to just accept what they were bringing. Did I accept what they were bringing? Yeah, I did. Because I feel like if I trust you enough to come this close, my discernment, my intuition, something told me that, that, that you were cool to have in my space. And then mm -hmm. I found out later that I picked up a snake and you bite me. So it's like I can't blame nobody but myself. So I don't right. even blame blame those people. Betrayal is a part of the of, is a, comes with the territory. So yeah, yeah it probably was for somebody to backbite you or to stab you in the back. They have to be within close proximity of your back. So mm -hmm. it's somebody that's close, and I got a great idea who it is, and mm -hmm. I already released them, covered them for for ten years. Now this is fourteen years old. Yeah, for ten years I've been praying for this person, and yeah. they. To come to me and try to apologize. You know what I'm gonna tell them? You don't have to apologize. It's okay. Right. It's okay. I hope you got out of it because you you, you have now grown and 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 got the the healing. Yep. Um. That that was necessary and that you needed as a re as a result of it. And then also, you know, as we go through these levels of um, traumas or traumatic experiences, uh, we learn. Yes. We learn. So you probably, you know, have developed and learned some ways to um, handle things differently. So now, let's, where, what was the, when did the breakdown with your relationship with Byron Cage happen? <laughs> Do I have to? <laughs> yeah, we, no halls barred. We don't. We, we don't. We don't. We don't. I've never told the story, so I'm. I'm kind of, and I'm gonna. I'm gonna share this because I think this will help somebody. So, Brent Jones, who had been working with us on staff, got elevated to another church in the area. I won't name the church, but he was the minister of music. He was coordinating music for an Easter program. He okay. invites me to come over and to sing on Easter Sunday. I get a, 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 a approval from the pastors as well as from the uh, from Byron. He knew exactly where I was going to be. So I came to one of the services uh, and then I worked and then I left and I went and did the gig. And it was 
who knew Barack Obama was going to be the keynote speaker? So I'm singing Rain on Us, Sasha, you Malia. Know, I, Mas- sat, <laughs> I sat behind at Coretta Scott King's funeral. I was looking at the back of Barack <laughs> Obama's head. They love God, Doc. I did. I and and he was just a senator, and we. I mean, we. Talk, <laughs> I didn't even take a picture with him because I was just like, "Oh, okay." And we were in the VIP area because you know that funeral was like six, seven hours. Oh, all it's, it's a So funeral. we were back, and we were talking. He was like, "Oh, do you want some of the uh, Cheetos, or do you want?" <laughs> Why do you sound like it? And so I was like, "Oh, give me that!" And oh, while you over <laughs> there, give me a drink. You know, like. I'm waving at him like he the hell. And this I'm, man is I'm mad that you sound like him. So I, I, yeah. I'm mad that you sound like him. But that 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 Sunday turned into the next day. We were on CNN. We were on the Washington Post. We were all over all the media outlets that Monday after this happened. And I got a call to come to the church. And I'm thinking, oh, they're going to celebrate me. They're going to tell me, you just sung before Michelle and Barack Obama. And you were singing your number one song. And I got in that meeting and it was the meeting. Well, he's the one who called me and told me we're going to meet. I get to the church and I say, where is Minister Cage? They said, oh, he's not here. I was like, oh, okay. So they said, you're going to actually be meeting with HR. So I'm like, I'm thinking I'm going to get a raise. You know what I'm saying? I haven't had any problems. I've been here 10 years. And they were like, yeah, we are um, here to just inform you that, you know, Minister Cage wants to go another way. Um, your services, you know, effective immediately. And so I didn't, at first when they said it, I said, well, you know, whatever God is doing in this season, you know, just don't do it. I'm sorry, am I being fired? (laughs) (laughs) So I'm like, are you kidding me? I mean, what what was the, and they said, well, you know, you have an at will policy here at the church and we don't really need a reason, which, and I'm looking like, I'm living, Literally being let go. So this big celebration on Sunday, Monday I'm fired. I'm like, well, do I get to say goodbye to my choir, to the press? No, we're going to escort you to your office and you're going to remove all, all your belongings. And yeah. So can you imagine wow. the unmanageable was that, disappointment? Was he that insecure? I, I'm not going to say, I, you know, I, I don't want to say insecure. What, what I, what I, what I can walk away with is the fact that my season was probably up. Sometimes people can just see, you know, your evolution and they'll feel like, oh, okay, we, we, he was under us for so long. And so if they don't push you out of the nest, sometimes maybe you won't fly. And I had a lot of other things that the enemy brought to me, like professional jealousy. And I, I said, no, 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 no. I refuse to believe that whether I'm in denial or not. Uh, I just wanted to walk away and say, the only reason you can't walk through a door is that's not your door. If God has orchestrated, ordained, anointed you for this time, maybe 10 years is what, I, what I'm supposed to do. So I'm going to tell you the okay, reason so I feel like... That's a nice churchy answer. I want yeah. the real answer. So I really believe that, 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 that's, that's nice and churchy. What, <laughs> let's get down to the groveling. I think he was because he he probably felt like that should have been the his stage. That should have and, been his stage. And, and now he was mad because he gave you the opportunity, you know, not necessarily thinking, you, you know, pro- probably just thinking, oh, it's just gonna be a little Easter program. I'm going to go somewhere else and make some more, you know, get another piece of a chain. So I, I just don't know what was in his mind. All I know is he did not call me. And then even after it was over, I said, that's what we're doing. Are you going to call me back? So I got no call back. He was totally aware of what happened. And we did not talk for about three years. We didn't talk for How three years. How was it when you encountered him? Because I'm sure you had to encounter him within that three years. I would see him in the airports and, you know, it would be, what's up, man? But it still was like, there's no closure. Like one day I really want to know 
you know, why, why did I lose my job after 10 years when you guys had all of my evaluations were stellar? I wouldn't have any, what was the problem? And I wanted to say it, but then a part of me just did not want to disturb the peace and talk about it. So I said, you know what I'll do? I, I, if it doesn't bother you, if it doesn't phase you, because clearly I've gone on to win and, you know, listen. When, now, where did you go from there? From there, I went touring. Like, I, I, a real trusted friend of mine in the industry, I'll tell you who it was, Daryl Coley. He said, you lost your job. Because I had to go do a, a, gate, a date in Oakland the next week. And I said, yeah, I'm a little depressed. He said, depressed? Do you understand? You're at the top of the charts. You can go do an e-blast to say, I'm now available to sing the number one song in the country on Sunday morning. You depressed? He said, you better do like Joe said. It's good that you was afflicted. What was meant for evil is going to work for your good. So I'm feeling, all, yeah, yeah. So be, I had to adopt that into my spirit and say, you know what? It really is good because had I stayed there, I never would have went on a tour. I never, And I did nothing but rain on us. And then a, a year later, I need you. Glory went number one. When I tell you I tripled my salary at, that, that I was making while I was there, I tripled. And I mean, from the, the next several years, six, seven figure years, I didn't see him at the airports. I didn't see him on the same stage as I was. It's kind of like God just kept us covered. And when we finally did meet up, we were like, you know what it is. It's like I've, I've come into prominence. You've come into prominence. I'm not saying I'm who you are or greater than you, but what I'm saying is, you know, I can hold my own. I don't need anything from you. I'm cool. So at that point, we became not boss and, and employee. We became colleagues, whatever, homies, industry. And we were equal pretty much because I'm like, I'm out here. You see me jumping on planes two and three times every week. And I never visited the conversation again um, at all because I just didn't feel like I wanted to give too much energy to it. You let me go. It was... A lot of people say it was cold blooded. You know, we were friends before all of this happened. And so I'm never going to let money, status, number one hits. I'm never going to let any of that get into an authentic family. You know what I'm saying? You're my homie. You mean, I'm, I, I go for you. You know, I'm, I, so if I mess with you like that, I'm like, I'm almost in denial. I don't want to even see your vulnerability. So and see you. You, <clears throat> you, you have a long because see I, I'm the, I'm the type of person see that's it you, you, you know what I mean see, you can't you that. me that first time I hate you forever I hate your mama I hate your grandma I will kill your dog you can't I, do that I, I I you know because see the thing about it is it that Ernest you have to be careful with it because if when they show you who they are and when they do it one time you you cannot leave that door open and a lot of times what happens is you are you are feeling more for the individual than what they're reciprocal to yeah. than what they feel for you yeah. you you see what i'm saying he looked at you as a threat let's just call it ace a ace and a spade a spade he looked at you as a threat. He 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 shouldn't have been mad at no one but himself for allowing that opportunity to slip through his hands. Because you, I, I, you don't know what song is gonna be the next hit. Right. Just like you know, like how you were saying with Carrie, I don't know what interview. It it, it could be this one. It right. could be one that's coming down the road. I don't know. You know, you don't know what's going to be that one thing that's going to click and set you set you apart. And he was just insecure and he got jealous and you, you had to go. Hit the road, Jack. And get the, get your pack your bags and get the hell out. <laughs> so you so you you started touring. And so when did you work your way to Houston and how did that, how did you land in, um, in uh, Houston? A friend of mine, uh, this was around about two, uh, 2013, 2012, 2013. They had been calling and calling and calling. I went to this church there called the Civil Lake Church. I did a three days worship symposium. It was amazing. 
And my friend who was the minister of music said, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm going to go into the pastorate. I need you for, for one year to come and just be the pastor of worship. I was like, I don't want to work for another church. After what happened at that church, I swore I would never be in a position where somebody can come tell me to go down the road and get my stuff. So I was like, I'm going to take my career and how I make a living into my own hands. No, I don't want it. So I gave them my astronomical figure, just knowing they wasn't going to hire me. They called me back in 72. I was like, we got it. I'm like, so what do I do? I'm not leaving my house in Maryland. They say, we're going to fly you back and forth every weekend. So for one solid year, I came in to work for this one particular church. And once my contract was up and I found them somebody else to replace me because I just missed being on the road and having the autonomy and not better than not having to get back and do a choir rehearsal or get back and do a praise team. Or say, so I was like, I just, I don't want to do this. I don't care how much money it is. Peace of mind is mm -hmm. if something, if it's costing you your peace, it's too expensive. So before I left, I get this message in my inbox. Um, I think it was on Twitter. And it was Keon Henderson. He said, I heard on the radio today, you're saying you're leaving Houston. I said, yeah, I'm going back to DC, man. My house is there. You know, that's did my happy Did y'all already place. know each other? Um, we had met at TBN a few times. He was preaching. I was doing music. We had met at TBN one time at the Word Network. And we just kept running into each other. And he was like, I love your flow. And I love how you get the people to worship. And I said, okay, cool. He said, I got a young <laughs> <laughs> he said, I have a young adult kind of congregation, but we, if we had a worship leader and an artist with a name, we could really, you know, really impact Houston. And I said, well, I think about it, but I said, Doc, I'm telling you, I'm really looking to be done with Houston and I'm going back to Maryland. He hit me up again. And I said, man, I was joking. I said, you can't really afford me. You know, you can't afford me a new church. You can't afford me. So I said, you know what? I'm going to go check him out. So I checked him out on a midweek service and the boy was preaching. He had, he was doing his Bible study in a cafeteria and I'm an older cat. Like Keon is like, could be the, could be one of my nephews. I mean, I'm 57 years old this year. I don't, I don't think he's even 40 yet. So the word he was preaching, I was loving to see these young adults like come unglued. They had an unction of function. They had a five with desire. I said, I can't promise you how long I'll be here, but I would love to help you put some fire up under this and just really get it going. So he hadn't even got into his building and stuff yet. He was at a cafeteria for Bible study. He was at a school. He had, he did not have a band. I hired him his first band, hired him his first choir. I brought in his uh, engineer, sound engineer. I brought in PR. And I was posting his messages on my page because nobody knew who he was. He was, he was whoever he was, but... He had not really connected and the people would, had, would not resonated with him because of whatever reason. Well, within two years or so, we was seeing exponential growth. We going, we going, we going. You know, three years come, we going, we going, we going, we growing. Four years come, you know, something similar to what happened. Uh, <laughs> I get a call from HR to say, uh, you know, we just, uh, you know, we, we're going to go another direction. Okay. Because so my you thing had is, only been at Lighthouse for four years. Four years. And my thing is when the world is your stage and you literally are losing money to come back and work for a church. Because anybody who's out here working as an artist with popular songs, you know you can jump on planes three, four, five, four times a week. It's very difficult to get on a plane Saturday night and be on the ground in time for an eight or ten o'clock service. So the weeks that I came to do his, I actually sacrificed. You yeah, know, because Sunday morning is your biggest opportunity to be somewhere. Yeah, but really Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, because I can work Friday, I can do a concert Saturday. On Sunday, I can do two morning services on a Saturday night. But when you uh, embrace somebody's vision and you're going to empower the people and work, do the worship flow, do the communion, bury the dead, have a way, when you're doing all of that, you have to say to yourself, I can only do this for a season. So I didn't go in ever thinking I would be there forever because, you know, I just, I like making money too much and I like being gone. And this is the thing, when the world is your stage and you have, have a demand on your life, when you have those low seasons, when you're not working, it's perfect time to do a church. But when the season comes where you need to go, you are out of order to sit there and because you're going to become bitter, you're going to be upset, you're going to begin to think down little and low. And so I had to be honest with myself. When they came to me and told me it was time to go, I rejoiced because mm -hmm. I'm getting ready to go back to doing 
what I really wanted to do. And so people made up all kind of rumors and said, you know, you did this. Let me say this. I was in a, 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 a committed relationship. Were in a relationship? Who in a relationship? Were no. Like, were I don't, you, oh, were I you in a committed me and were who? you and Keon a friendship? And no, you know, and I never, I never sleep where I eat. That's one thing. I didn't have sex because the, no sex the, the, the now this is the, okay. So we going, we 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 going, yeah. we going. Let's the, go. The Let's word get it. that came, the word that 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 came unto me mm-hmm. <laughs> was that you and. and Keon were involved and that's hilarious you cut out cut out Keon and you started or had a a twist with a guy by the name of Justin Edwards that was from Chicago. Hilarious. My homeboy. And they, um, and I never they reported to me that you all lived together. Me and Keon you know, lived together? He had a whole life. Not you and Keon, you and Justin, Justin? Oh lived my God. together. Or, or that y'all started living together or something after the party. Because I'm going I'm to be frank with you. Mm. I'm, I, I'm not going to be disrespectful, but I'm going to be frank and candid with okay. you. The way, the way that Keon was so vicious and malicious, um, I think with both, e- e- even, even DC, even with Byron, it has that homosexual queen undercurrent to it you know men and straight men they just kind of roll and vibe a certain kind of way without let's the just put it out of there let's just if we're gonna have the conversation let's have yeah. the conversation yeah, gay men homosexual men yeah. down low men they have this evil streak this um this level of I gotta get you, I gotta get you oh. back. Um, this level revenge. of revenge, um, the, the this whole idea of uh, of you know trying to blacklist or you know um, the, the you know this high idea where if I don't want him here that other pastors are not, you know what I'm saying, are, are not going to want to, I can bad mouth his name and say this. That was all of the vitriol and the undercurrent. Now, you may not have been aware of it. I wasn't. But that was all of the undercurrent mm-hmm. that was That's coming as a result of um you know, you're, uh, you're being let go. So now let me ask you, did you sue Keon as an individual or did you sue him and the church? Did you I sue both? Can't really, uh, I can't really uh, go into that whole piece. The only thing I can really say about that, about that whole thing was I did not have any sexual relationship with anybody on that man's staff from the top to the bottom, from the rooter to the tutor. I did my work, I kept my head down, I put my hands to the plow, and when it was time to go, I left. I understand that a lot of stuff was said, but I was like, he's another one. He didn't have any conversation after this transpired. I texted him, I said, I just want you to know I met with HR, I would love to meet with you. He said, I'm not ready. These churches with these HR departments. They better have HR from? because when you, when you retain an attorney, they don't want to talk to pastor. They, the, the, the HR is going to fall on the sword, not the pastor, even though he's behind it. He's the puppet. He's, he's the puppeteer. The puppet he, don't, he don't want that smoke. So when it's time to go, you know, um, I can't go into a whole lot of the legality part of it, but, you know, 
it was just time to go. I was ready to to move on to something. I think they're doing great. I've moved on. I don't see any of those people on my planes. I don't see them on my stages. I don't know what they're doing. I wish them well, but we built a lot that they're enjoying right now. So that's my, when I pass by that place, I say to myself, we helped them build something great. And then when our time was over, we bounced. And I wish them well. But I do hear a lot of chatter out there, but they don't want the smoke. So how do you, how did you just kind of come to the resolve to, okay, so what, to take it on the chin like that? And, and are you friends with Justin Edwards? Yeah, Justin. Justin is my homie. Like, Justin is my dude. Justin never lived in Houston, Texas with me. Justin has a beautiful wife, two amazing little children. But not at that Justin, time. I, that, that's before he had he was, the wife and the kids. Oh, he didn't have, No, he didn't live here in Texas. Because y'all were friends, friends mm-hmm. prior to, and then shortly thereafter, he went over to Brian Randolph Nelson. Okay. And See, I he, knew, like, I, was I, I playing the, he was playing the organ over for Brian or, yeah. or trying to play or do something for Brian Randolph Nelson. That's before the big man with no teeth. And then, and then uh, you remember he was having a three o'clock. He was having a little mission service was, when uh, at three o'clock he was trying to jump. He attempted to jump start a church. And I believe when y'all had one of those. Uh, Typhoons or, or, or whatever when the water rush in. What? <laughs> what, what, what? what y'all call it when the water come in and uh, wash you all away? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Just y'all had some kind thing. of storm and she oh, the hurricane. Oh, the hurricane. The hurricane. Okay. And his house okay. got flooded and he pretty much lost everything. Oh. And that's how he trekked back. Too. I never knew all of this story. I'm telling you, like I met him more in a, in a seminary type thing. I gave him a few books for school and he booked me. This is how I met Justin. He booked me to come to some conference he had done. He actually had Jamal Bryant to preach. I did the music and I was like, this is a young cat, but he's doing like big things. We exchanged numbers, but we never even went to lunch together until maybe four years ago and he had already moved away to Chicago, came to have lunch to talk about doing another conference. And when I heard that in the thing, I was like, poor Justin, they done poor Justin. <laughs> and Justin got a whole family and I don't know how his wife, you know, did it. I'm, I know my family didn't survive it well, but I feel so bad and I called him apologizing. I don't know why I was apologizing because I've never put him in, you know, any, any of that stuff. I always think about people's family and who I'm affecting. So I don't know where they got Justin's name from. I really honestly don't even think Justin is on that team. I'm serious. My hand to God. I'm going to tell you where I got it from. Because I like to tell names, dates, (laughs) times. So at the time, I was, uh, I, I was associates or, you know, somewhat friends with Larry Reed. Mm -hmm. And I have known him for an extended, or knew of him for an extended period of time. He started listening to my radio show when I was doing internet radio with a guy Mm -hmm. by the name of uh, Dion Evans out of my hometown of Oakland, California. He would call in to the show on a daily basis. Mm. And he was so into the show that when I would go to Kojic meetings, um, convocation, women's convention, AIM, I with my silly self, unbeknownst to me that he was going to try, he was trying to build an audience and, and a following, I would let him fill in. Oh, on wow. The- my show Mm -hmm. um and so you know it was but i i was not i was not aware or thinking you know by far that anybody that was a pastor would want to infiltrate a blogger you know who would who would give up pastoring to to be a blogger and so that was 
sort of the um, the friendship or the relationship. Now we had a parting of ways. We had a parting of ways when uh, Dion's um, just like with you. Mm -hmm. uh, my numbers was higher than the owner of the station show in numbers. So I told him in a meeting, I was like, well, Dion, perhaps you ought to just function <laughs> on making the station good and not trying to be a owner of the station and a personality too. You know, work with what's working and work yeah. with what's making money. So um, it got to the point where he owed me something like maybe six or seven thousand dollars. Wow. That and the advertisers, it was just, you know. And so what I told him, I said, I, I went to the studio and I was like, Dion, we need to cut now because it's just accruing and it's getting to be more and more and you're not going to be able to eventually you know pay me off because each time I do a show that's you know that's some more money that's being you know tacked on to the debt he convinces Larry to pay him for my time, time slot. So when I saw that, I was like, and everybody was like, oh, it's just business. He never charged you. He was paying you. I'm paying him. You know, what's the beef or what's the issue? So I totally, you know, parted ways. I cut him off. Mm -hmm. I wasn't in any kind of way speaking to him. Wow. Uh, because I just, you know, I saw for for what it mm -hmm. was. And so then I got an inbox that, you know, he had collapsed the church or whatever happened with the church and he was in Atlanta. Wow. And I thought that whole thing was interesting. Like, you know, I, it, it just, it, it didn't make sense to me. Why would you stop pastoring? So anyway, he came to Atlanta and, uh, uh, you know, there's always been rumors about me being an extortionist and, you know, getting, <laughs> getting money. Huh? Have you I heard, heard that? Time. I, I, I'm sure. So um, that, you know, that rumor was circulating and um, but you know, that, that was never the case. Mm -hmm. I've, you know, never, I've, I've never done that. And, uh, I've been offered big money, you know, to go silent on some stories and it can be, or could have been lucrative, but you know, that, that just was not in my makeup. So anyway, long story short, um, you came up. And what he was supposed to have um, and what he was doing, what he did with Keon Henderson, what he did with E. Dewey Smith, what he did with Matthew Stevenson, and what do what he did with... Um, what do you mean, promotion-wise? He was supposed to have been promoting their music. Oh. That's what... But he, that's what the contract, you know, you have some legal background. Um, that's what the contract said. But the actuality of why you have this contract and why you have received payment is to be quiet. So there was supposedly something that had transpired between in you and Keon. And hmm. So I got the call and the call was I can't do, do this story. My hands are tied. Will 
it would be perfect for you. Oh. You. Wow. So I was like, oh, hell yeah. I heard this. I've been writing <laughs> on you, know, you know, for a while. Yeah, let's go. Let me go on and get my dad in. <laughs> so I literally was delivered the story. That you, what was supposed to have happened? You and Keon was in an in a uh, homosexual relationship, and you cut out on him. Mm. He got furious. He fired you. Um, unlawfully, whatever, uh, whatever the, the the legal mumble jumble was. Right. And he That's crazy. was like, hell no. <laughs> I'm not going through what I did before, and he going to have to pay me. Jennifer Holiday, and you, and you, and you. No. <laughs> so, no, that is not. I don't know why people. These, are, this, these will be some yeah, good now, movies. This is when I really started developing some vitriol for you because I was having what? What's your friend's name, Kevin, or or something like that? You have a a a, a close buddy. I don't know if he's your manager Keith. or he works. Keith. Uh -huh. Okay, so there was conversations with Keith and there was conversations with Keon. Okay. And I was going back and forth between the both of both of them. Now what was said was that, that uh, Keith said or supposedly had told Larry that y'all wasn't going to pay me ish to be quiet on, you know, coming out with the story about you supposedly being fired from Lighthouse because y'all had been in a relationship. Mm -hmm. So I had that conversation. We just keeping it 100, right? Mm -hmm. I had that conversation and after that conversation, I started getting emails from GoDaddy and WordPress. You have, your site will be shut down. You have strikes against your site. Your site will be shut down in um, 72 hours. You'll have a week to collect your files, move your files from being hosted by us to another entity. Now, the only, the only link that would have even remotely been aware or affiliated with how that process works was two people. And that was Larry and Vincent Terrell Hill that mm. worked for Larry. Mm. So then I was called and I was convinced and here I am being naive and dumb. I'm can, I was told to give this guy that likes to snort cocaine named Vincent Terrell Hill two thousand dollars to rip my site pull my site back and put me on another hosting thing it was all a part of this this ploy to knock william and obnoxious out the game mm -hmm. so that um he could be center stage well a friend of mine told me a friend of mine came here he was from charlotte and he came to atlanta to do a two or three night revival and he was doing a revival at a pastor at a preacher's church that i despise so he said he said, Will, are you going to come over to hear me 
preach and you know to support me or what have you that is a good friend mm. i said oh i would dare <laughs> i wouldn't dare step foot in so-and-so's church so he said and this is my point he said he said damn well he said you are evil cruella de <laughs> <laughs> and so he tried or they may have tried and I may not ever really know all of the true details well if somebody how, if they had violations they won't tell you where the, where the violations came from um the, the, the a lot of that internet stuff they'll give you an email address but you know if somebody makes up a that's true you know yeah. such and such fake email address like and then you really have to now you can eventually go back and try to pinpoint the ip address yeah. or whatever yeah. but all of that all you know all of that you, uh, accumulates money but at, around that time you would look and you had reviewed some contracts for him. Because as you remember at that time, he was being hit with all those uh, lawsuits and those cease and desist, you remember? Yes. And okay. didn't you fly in mm -hmm. to review something or y'all connected or did he fly to you? So Something was emailed to me, but I, I'm always afraid to touch things like that because I haven't really gotten updated all that, you know, my credentials and stuff. So I'll always say, I would send that over to Heather Beverly. I was, you know, somebody who's really operating in that type of litigation because that's complex litigation. And I was like, I will, oh, no, 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 don't send me nothing. I, I cover my eyes. So I always refer people out when I know I can't help them. But I didn't know any of the content, of any of the, the story, any of the characters that were involved in it, the players in it. I was like, no, I don't want, and it was thick. It was like, when the, when the document was sent to me, it was like 45 pages. You know yeah, what? I mean, because he was getting hit hard. He, I think, I think in a matter of a week or two, he was hit like with at least, I, I want to say at least six. Yeah, see, they didn't. I At stayed least it, because it was it was Matthew Stevenson, it was E. Dewey, it was Keon. Um, oh, I used to have it all where I could just rattle them, um, rattle them right off. Um, but that was, you know, that was what. Um, you had was be all caught up in that. I and I was I developed without knowing you, without you know, without having a conversation. I was I had just developed this you know this hatred and this vitriol. You know, um, if a person said your name, oh. Oh, you know, I was just, well, you know, I'm melodramatic. Anyway, so I would, you know, oh, and they, oh, he can sing. Oh, I wouldn't have him take my car off. And, you know, and, and then it was friends that, because then you remember Keelan, Keelan Francis Smith, you all had been in talks about you coming and taking on um, a minister of music role <coughs> in his church. The blog 08 came up and, you know, his deacons and trustees. And you remember we had a brief conversation, At dinner. you know, um, um, back then. And it really got heated because, you know, I don't know if you knew, but they really, they were really interested in bringing you to Atlanta. And I was like, oh no, he cannot come here. You, you, <laughs> you got, you took my bag. <laughs> and it was, I, it, I'm going to tell you how bad it was. I had to use with, I, you know, 
you don't lose with what I use. <laughs> and, and so come on, I, I, it, it got to the point where at the end of the day, I had to pull the trunk to say, look, you bring him here. What? And this post is going to go out on you and everything I know about you. You went I, that hard? I went hard. Oh. Why you just, just call me and we talk? Um, I, we were beyond that. You know what I mean? We were beyond, it was, it was like, if we saw each other, let's just get down on the ground and <laughs> run. You know what I mean? It was just, because you, now you got to think the, I guess it was sort of like reciprocal yeah. because you know, of everything that had happened to you had come and was happening. Because just think about it. I mean, I have been blogging all those years in your full sight, you know, and then like, you know, now you can have an old story that Research. somebody will see and it'll resurface oh, yeah. and you'll start yeah. getting happens all the time. And, and, and it'll start making money. So it was, I mean, it was, it was deep. It was, you know, it was very, very deeply rooted. It was, I mean, and, and I, but I just want to know some stuff first mm -hmm. because um, what is your thoughts? You're 57. Yeah. You year. have seen, um, you have seen the church grow, evolve, and and uh, and change, um, and people become more accepting, more enlightening. I'm not I'm not saying that are 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 putting you on the carpet about your you know sex or sexuality, but do you think? if you were to come out or, or say I'm bisexual, do you think at this juncture, would it really matter now? I think it would. I don't, I don't think the people sitting in those pews are, are ready to hear anybody um, do any of the un, um, traditional lifestyles. It's, it's, it's apparent with the uh, legislation that's on the hill about the LBGTQ community. The people in Florida are banning, uh, not that I have anything or any affiliation with it, but just to watch in the news, um, they feel that the drag queens are influencing little boys. Uh, they feel like uh, that they need to, and some places are literally pressing charges if they see like a drag queen. They're shutting down places. So I think just as we watch Roe versus Wade get overturned, there were a lot of things that Obama did in favor of people who alternative who have alternative lifestyles. That stuff is being turned back now. So it's not popular. It's not wise. They're, they're becoming very violent. So I think anybody who's having any type of uh, but what, alternative what about all of the we have here in Atlanta, the Vision Church. Yes. We have, you know, a lot of, I mean, the bag may not be as large, but you don't think that you would be able to um, thrive, survive if if that was in fact the case? Because I just I think that people I I I, I think that people are a little more um, open minded. Mm -hmm. um, um, and, and, and maybe I don't know what that perspective would be like for a preacher or a singer or, or something of that sort, but it just seems to me that the world, I had, I had Ted Wynn one time tell me in an interview, um, because I was going in on Leandria, uh, and, you know, that was during her days okay. when she was. You know, she good now. Yeah, she's all right now. But you know, Leandria has some wretched behavior. But people, 
People love that. Yeah. They, um, and see, that's what, that, to my point. So, but he said, uh, he said, why would y'all hold us to this standard? We're not pastors. We're not preachers. Gospel music is a genre of music like R&B, like country, like hip hop. And I was, you know, when I, I was kind of being checked, but I was kind of being enlightened, enlightened. at the same time as to um, somebody talking about your cheekbones. That's Botox, girl. <laughs> he didn't have Botox. <laughs> no way. It ain't. He's 57 with no wrinkle nowhere. That, that Don't believe him. him. He didn't have, did have some injections. I know. I no. But, I'm too country for that. But, I, you know, it kind of really, to be honest with you, Ernest, it, 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 it opened my eyes a little bit to kind of think about, well, maybe, you know, as a performer, you know, uh, maybe it's not the big deal no. that Not in we, creative spaces. In creative spaces, it's almost like the scripture that says you have to become all things to all men that you may win them. Like an actress, like a, a real actress can be anybody. You could be a heterosexual man and you can play the heck out of a gay character and vice versa. You can be gay and you can play a straight character. That's what it, the arts the arts come into play. And you really, like, some people don't identify with a sex. They don't identify male, female, straight, gay. They're just like, you know what? I'm just, I'm a Yeah, artist. just like how, what is, uh, 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 oh, God, his name just escaped me. Uh, Let's Make a Deal just came out. Oh, like yeah. Was, uh, Brian. Pansexual or whatever. Yeah. Because with the one thing that I do look at, um, just like with me, you know, the first thing, and I really get what you're saying, because the first thing that somebody wants to say to be negative or to really, you know, gut you or, or get you, you gay, you a faggot, you this, you know, and I'm mm -hmm. like, if you over here, you know, supporting Wayne Brady, thank Wayne Brady. you all. Yeah. Um, if you over here supporting the gays, then how is that? An insult to say you get, you know what I'm saying, or to mm -hmm. attempt to call someone out on that particular um, um, on that particular issue. Uh, yeah. I just I don't think like I don't think their sexuality think would be totally fine. I think well, I, the, the, I think that if you and, and I'm not saying, I'm not, you know, calling you out, but I think that at this juncture of your, of your career, mm -hmm. I think that, I think that you would be totally fine. And I, and the reason why we got to, the reason why I would like to open up the conversation. Fine, we're what, Will? You would be we what? I had some, some struggles in there. I mean, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm not saying that. I, I, I'm certainly not making an indictment on you in any kind of way. Yeah. But all my point is is that I don't think. But I don't think it would matter to that degree anymore. No, I'm not trying to pitch you. I, I, I let me be very sincere and very and very straightforward. I'm I'm not putting you in that category, I, but what I'm saying is is that there has been rumor and that there has been conjecture that whether you wanted it to or not has aligned you with the assumption sure. or with that particular group, and so whether you are or not, you're kind of already accused sure. of, of, of being that. And I just don't feel that at this place that it would, I, I don't think engagements would stop. I don't, I don't, I don't think it would have the impact. Now, 08, 
That was major. That that <laughs> it would have been. It, it would have been hell. Now, 2023, 20 going into 2024, it might be a hell. Know. Well, you know, I still get people when I'm in concerts and I go by myself. I still get people trying to prophesy and tell me they got a wife for me. I was like, I was married 18 years. Um, I'm good on that. And rather, I was heterosexual, homosexual. What's that thing Brady said he is? Pan or whatever. Pansexual. I'm like, you're not going to make me feel like I'm incomplete because I'm not married. You know what I'm saying? I, I get married. I got two right. kids. I like, I'm not married and I don't I don't desire children. Really? I don't I I don't and I I don't have that grace. I don't have that I don't I don't have that love or I don't I just don't have that desire to, you know to to parent a child and to be responsible and you know and and sometimes i feel bad about it because i I, you know my my parents are i'm the third and so they're very um they're very big on legacy and your firstborn and you know but i just i don't have um don't have that in me you know what i mean like i does I, I don't well i don't know how to really articulate it but i don't necessarily thing. have that you know that feel and it's okay. in me to okay. want to to be it's somebody's to, dad it's be honest yeah. about it. i think it's better to be honest about it than to go and say for instance you inherit a child because somebody dies and you know that you really don't have the grace to do that but you you know you take this on and it becomes more of a burden than a blessing and that per- it's not going to be good for anybody nobody wins so i think it's good to know that about yourself you know to be very aware you know of what your boundaries are and what you can handle than to take it on and not do a good job cuz you know we carry in them you know we they're we're responsible for this foundational years we're building their character we're teaching them morals and principles and stuff like that. So you need to really be in tune to do that. Exactly. Yeah. And getting back to my point yeah. of having this very uncomfortable, very difficult conversation is in the early part of the interview, you said, that some tests you was able to pass yeah. and then some you were not. No. Let's just gonna put the hand, let's just gonna call it out. A lot of guys, a lot of guys was introduced to same sex behaviors in church. Sure. Deacon so and so, so and so, um, uh, uh, the 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 youth pastor. I have Ernest. I have done countless stories mm-hmm. of men and guys that mothers. You know, I talked to eighty two. Now it was only five mm-hmm. that made the 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 case with Eddie Mom. But the the laundry list was yeah. far greater, and I and, and you her. had people whose grandmother and um uh whose grandmothers and uh you know families uh entrusted entrusted bishop with with their children you know but to, it goes even deeper than that like even with a person of his caliber and responsibility as a bishop just think about it these things are passed down from generation to generation and so even with me when it was introduced into my this thing was introduced into the bloodline of somebody who was not interested was not looking for that to happen and when it happened out of respect you don't you don't turn them in when it happened with me at around seven nine and eleven it was a teacher at school that was respected 
And, and so me, I'm thinking in my mind, I'm in a small town. This man is respected. They're not going to believe me. So They're I not going to believe it. you. How do you come up against this demagogue of a person? You, you see what and I'm saying? And you, then when you get you, older <clears throat> and you carry that with you uh, into life and then you rush into a relationship because it's the natural thing to do uh, that the church wants you to do, but you've not even navigated what it is, even understanding where, where these feelings came from, where these desires come from. You push it down, you try to suppress what you need to express, and before you know anything, you know, you are caught. You're caught in between, and it's like, you gotta please, you gotta just kind of comply now and complain later. Exactly. Some people don't survive. I survive. I can't tell you the amount of times that I use alcohol to medicate myself or even contemplated running away so that I didn't have to bring shame to my family. But God kept me through it. Some people don't have a spiritual foundation. And so even people like Eddie Long, it makes me think in my mind, because I, I went to the church and ministered to him many times, but I saw a man who did not take joy, perhaps, in that particular uh, proclivity because he knew that eventually this thing was going to unravel and he saw it unraveling. And I could see really a reverence and a respect for God when he was going through that. Now, everybody didn't see this, but I'm saying a person who's gone through what he's gone through can uh -huh. understand and understand what he's going through, what he's navigating what he's struggling with, what he's winning, and when he's losing. I could be losing, 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 losing. I'm not going to let anybody know that because people are depending on you. So, you know, I feel bad for everybody right. that was adversely affected by what he did, but I also had to look at the man that was, you know, that was perpetrated, that was doing these things. He also had his battles. He had his demons. And he, like me, won some battles and lost some battles. And if I could turn the clock back, and undo some of that stuff, I would. But what do you do? You 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 embrace the scripture that says, "My grace is sufficient." If you can, there's no condemnation. You can go and feel bad about it, and you can let people beat you up about it, or you can say, "You know what? I am a spiritual being, but I live in a body, and I got a flesh. And until, as long as I'm here on in this body, guess what? You're gonna get horny. You're gonna get text messages, and sometimes you may act on it." You may be strong in some seasons, and some seasons you may not be. So how do you reconcile that? You can't, we can't right. go around judging each other because if we did a poll of the 200 and some people that's on here now, and we say you can not put your name, but just write your challenge, write your, your you would be surprised. Some of the same things we're talking about that others are dealing with, they're dealing with it as well, if we would just be honest. So. You know, yeah. we in this world. I, I just, you know, I just think that, um, I think that some, uh, you know, may have to, um, you know, for lack of a better word, you know, have, have that uncomfortable conversation. Yeah. You, know you can't what I mean? suppress and, what you need to express. Yeah. If they was, if if this, if you don't suppress what you need to express, and you just walk through it and you talk through it, really, your healing and just coming into the reality of it can really vindicate you. When I when I start talking with other people who had been through what I, I was like, I kept this to myself from you from under ten. Can you imagine? You've Can carried you that. You've carried that burden. You, you know, the weight of it. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, it was good though. It was. It. It really. I. 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 I feel a lot better. I feel a lot better. I feel enlightened. Um. Uh. And. You know. Um. Really. You know. Ex. Excited about. Um, we have talked about lightly on, you know, some working, uh, and some things. So now you, um, is there some footage? <laughs> 
footage of what? Concert footage? Um, some footage perhaps that would be unfavorable for a, I guess, mega church pastor that's married to the ex-wife of an NBA star to um, come out that would be incriminating? I don't know anything about that. I mean, it's so funny. We need a show. You need a reality show, really. There's no cameras hmm? that perhaps I'm real may old fashioned. I'm real that old may old have fashioned. so you know what I always say well, when you what, have a good memory. I, okay, so can I ask it this way? What do you have that keeps him beholding to you because he's a very mean and very arrogant man mm -hmm. and he would not have you on an MDA or non-disclosure and certainly wouldn't be cutting a check if you didn't have the goods mm -hmm. so you got something on his you I just got a good memory mmm Oh, I don't know. Now, wait a minute. What are we talking about? Oh, you said I got, got something. Did, like some evidence. You, I, that, that you must have some strong, very serious evidence to corroborate whatever you I, may have said or, or heard because Keon is very arrogant. So it is no way that you would be on an MDA. It's no way that he with the vitriol that he had is no way that it, it it's just no way y'all give some cash out for this good tea right here <laughs> cash out sir william sir, <laughs> sir, sir william g mccray i i i but because i mean yeah we see his clips and we see his reels and what have you but you have had some encounters. I have had some encounters, and we know that that is a very different person mm -hmm. from who we know them to really be. Oh, yeah. And especially if they're, you know, feel like they're being backed into a wall. That's, that's fair. He's definitely a different person than the one that I was going to work with when I came here. He's, he's definitely not the same person. No. Um, just we have to just uh, run on to see what the end's going to be. We'll see. Mm. So tell me about Marty West. Is there some level of litigation with this alleged oh. producer from L.A. that used to be um, he used to be with um, uh, um, Kenneth Ulmer. Oh, yeah. Um, you know the story that I guess he's 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 running around saying, which I can speak a little bit. Uh, when somebody defames your character, you know you you go and you know when you're really serious about life, if somebody does you wrong, violates anything, or you know, you retain an attorney and you sort out these issues in a court of law. This young man wants to sort out these problems in the court of public opinion, which is indicative of the fact that clearly uh, he is not mature, he is not wise, he is not serious about having a career to come and try to do a smear campaign. The first question I would ask this young man is, where is your legally binding producer's contract? If you were hired to do a song for me, I work with the likes of a Jay Moss, Grammy Award winning Cedric Thompson, Rufus McGee, uh, Michael Burrell. Not one producer that I've ever worked with can say that they've not been paid to work for me. So to put that out in the atmosphere and not feel like it's going to come back, uh, you're not wise, you're not smart, you'll never make it to the big stages on life. So I don't know if he was going through needing to pay a car note or rent or what, but you know, to say that you 
you know, are owed money for something that you were never hired to do is kind of a little TikTok boom, kind of or a little have crazy. Have you served anything or has it just been no, talk? No, I, I don't think the, 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 the extent, the fact that he contacted you and wanted to talk about this in the court of public opinion, that's as high as it'll go. Because the first thing that's going to happen when you ascend to the court of law is they're going to ask you where your contract is. What were the terms of this agreement? Oh, I don't have an agreement. Then why are you here? Oh, you in your mind, right. you had a conversation or you sent something in, but you're acting as though you had been contracted and retained. You never were retained to produce a track. So people People submit demo tapes all the time, and I have certain requirements when you do a demo tape. You know, it's got to be background vocals in the tape so that we have a very good idea of what key it's going to be in, what's the bridge, what's the, you know. You haven't done any of this, so I'm like, sir, it's like the comment said, reading is fundamental. Where is your agreement with the terms? Where does it state that you were going to be compensated for anything that you did, making a making a dummy tape or what have you, where's the, where's the documentation? So AI can help you create fake text messages. That stuff is inadmissible in a court of law. So good luck, mm. good luck. Did you ever Everywhere know you him when he was there working for and playing for uh, Brian Randolph Nelson? No, I, I never knew he was ever here. I heard of him years and years ago uh, with Shane Perry. He was playing the organ with Shane Perry. And Shane Perry, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that man can preach now. No, Shane it's Perry not that. TV it's in. not that. No, no, no. I, you stand corrected. It's not <laughs> that Shane Perry can preach. What it is, is Shane Perry is a white boy with a basic black sound. Correct. And and we get caught up right. in this white boy sounding like a, 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 a black guy. But his preaching, his <laughs> messages are very, very surface. They're not, they're, they're, it, it, it's nothing to them. And You're not a fan. Because he's uh -oh. white. It's only he because he's kill him on white. That, like, he he would be shutting the building down on the word network and TBN. And that's why I met, I saw Marty the first time do that. And um, then I was trying to hire him about maybe eight years ago. He gave us this astronomical figure of what it would be to go and do shows with no resume. He had not been on any major tours, no, no Grammys under his belt. So he's delusional. I mean, he thinks he's like, I don't know. And so we never hired him. Never hired him. And the next thing I heard, he was living in L.A. I was like, wow, mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's finally Hollywood because he's, he's always acted Hollywood. So, but yeah, no, I haven't received anything. I understand that he tried to reach out to Shanaki, which he claims I don't have a deal, but he called over there and spoke to people at Shanaki and they let him know, sir, we have not retained you. You don't have a contract with us. What are you talking about? Wow. So I'd love to get my boy down. on a track. I would love to hear my voice on the track that he's done. Like, mm. if, if I've gone in the studio and recorded work that he's done, I would love to hear it, and I would love to see his agreement. What is What happened with you and what's this guy's name, Chuck? Or, uh, Chuck. I don't, I don't know anything about a Chuck. You just had a conflict or, or something happened. I'm getting the name wrong. I thought it started with a C. And Charles? you said some other, Char is it Charles? Oh, Charles Butler? Charles Butler, yes. What, what, what is that going on there? Charles Butler is arguably one of the most creative um, choir directors, choir masters that's out there. Kind of, you know, under the radar, like a lot of people don't know who he is, but he um, sang amazingly the backgrounds on rain on us that's charles butler and trinity out of dc when i was there they also sang on my christmas record um so they are like a really stellar group uh i took them out of the country we went to, to uh i think it was italy we went to italy we did a tour of italy they had never been out of the country uh so he was on my label and um um, did an amazing job but then just came to a place where we took them as far as they could as, as they could kind of go so they left uh, and they really, they left, I think, because the record that we were doing for it may have been out of season. 
um, Anderson, which is Walmart, did not feel that they had the key selling points to do a physical. So they would not even record a, put a physical album of them in Walmart stores. So I was not going to go back to them and, and, and break it hard with that news. So I creatively said, let's do a digital record. So the digital record, you know, is not the same, but we still pressed up a few physical records so that they could sell it. He was totally devastated by that because he had done all this great singing for me. He had been touring, people know him all over the world. And here he is, his season comes and Walmart does not feel like he belongs, you know, in the store, which was out of my control. Because if you ship them to Walmart and they don't sell, you get what's called returns. So not only do they take that money out of your account, but you have to pay to ship those records back to my address at the label. So I told him, I said, we can't do it. Anyway, I think the people made him feel like that he was just less than or the, but the album was impeccable. And so I think in his heart, he kind of held me responsible, uh, got an attitude with me, and I made a comment last year during the Stellars, which was not uh, a disparaging or anything to diminish who he is as an artist. And I said that they got a lot of things wrong at the Stellars. They were right there in Atlanta, and they did not honor LaShawn Pace Rhodes. And then Charles Butler is a choir, but they gave a Stellar to, to his band. So I was like, this is a slap in the face. Well, when I made the when I made the statement, the people on the live, they laughed. I was not doing it to, you know, to at all, to be evil, to be a hater. I love this cat. But he came back and clapped back and he was like, oh, this mezzo soprano, this and I'm like, mezzo soprano, it's, it's taking me all over the world. You should lip sync and do some mezzo, maybe, you know, I don't know. Maybe this would, I don't know. You may want to consider it. Because it pays me, serves me well. So, but he came for me. And of course me, you know, I'm the uncle, but I will come back. So I clapped back, you know, and I hate that I did that. I called him and left him a detailed message. I said, listen, you know me, I'm not, if you come for me publicly, you know, I'm not going to lose. You would do better to call me and we laugh on the phone. But you came for me publicly, you know, I got to get you. So, of course, it just, oh, it just, it was a spiral. Did you ever get me? No, but you, because I never, I, 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 I think when the street team that you have brings you stuff, your job is just, to, you know, you're going to report it. This is how you eat. I didn't like well, it. But you know what? But also, I'm going to be, uh, I, I, even more so now, I really, I, I, I'm, I, I really try to be careful. Yeah. You know what I mean? When I yeah, say yeah. certain things, because now that the platform is a lot larger, you know, I understand the impact, you know, um, I never would have known or I never would have thought that it would have been that, you know, I would have impacted your life to the degree that it did. No, that platform and, was powerful. Yeah. That the people were, they, uh, there was like hundreds of thousands of people by the time I saw it. I was like, it just got posted like days ago. It was like, that platform is, was, it's mighty. And what's funny is the church people are the main ones on there. Oh, oh yeah, the, the, I, the, and you would be surprised at the number of pastors and right and you know, first ladies and you know it's the the ones that too. it's entertaining too. Yeah, but the ones that bring the child, you you know, uh, and it, so it's it's interesting. I I really I cannot wait until when you're actually here and we're November four, yeah, and and we're able to do it in person Absolutely. and record the podcast because although we have really I, I uncovered a lot um, in person, um, yeah. it just you know to feel your energy and your vibe and what have you. Um, just, you know, means a lot. Listen and uh, tell us about this uh, project because uh, I know I've oh. held you over time. Yes, but this has been so good. Uh, I released yes. a record uh, called The Very Best of Ernest Pugh and a lot of people are like, why are you bringing all this old music? But what I'm trying to do is the new generation who has not heard stuff like uh, Wrapped Up, Tied Up, Tangled Up, Holy Spirit. There are people who are singing that music like, oh my God, this is, this is, this is amazing. And I'm like, I recorded that record in 2000, you know? So I wanted to reintroduce it to a newer generation, but then I recorded 
some new music. I got Sakati Cortez on the record, Crystal Aiken is on the record, Nikita Fox from Kurt Carr is on the record, Jamal Bryan is on the record. And uh, it's really good, produced by this cat out of uh, Rochester, New York, Rufus McGee. Keith is on there, who's been the executive producer of all of my records. And uh, it's really a good record. It's a heart record, something I wanted to do. Uh, and it's, 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 by, it, it's, they say y'all man, huh? They say you and Keith got married in Vegas. Oh my God. Tell them, show it to me. These people love, you know, I, I learned something new about I myself. Call, look, I call Cook County. I couldn't get no, I couldn't oh! get no man in the <laughs> These people will lead you. <clears throat> they will lead you off of a cliff. I learned so much more about myself every time. I'm like, I oh, what? And then somebody the other week was telling me you got some kids that somebody suing you for. I said, what? <laughs> After my second kid, love I got this. I, I don't love get it. mad, though. I don't get mad because people. Get that bag. Get that what bag. The moment, that not there, huh? the moment that we're not on there, the moment that we not a topic of their conversation, that's when the money cut off. You're done. So I just laugh and I'd be like, let me respond to it. If I had a baby by, and the girl that they showed the picture of that I had the baby with, I was like, oh my God, good luck. I said, happy landing. <laughs> that is too funny. Well, man, I, I really, this was really, really good. This was, this was, uh, this was really good. I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm really appreciative because, um, you know, we, we were able to tackle some some you know hard hitting and heavy hitting um um subjects and 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 topics that uh you know for all intents and purposes i never would have thought that we would have uh, been able to um just have a meeting of the minds yeah. and you know just to really yeah you know, uh uh you know come and say, okay, wait a minute. This, this was this is fact versus Rumor. this being fiction. Yes. Yeah. And, and so I appreciate it. Um, yeah, Thank I, you for I, the I, I, know, I appreciate you. And I hope that um, I hope that one of the things that it'll do is allow other artists and other people that I may have. Cool. You know, um, talked about to see me in a different light, in a different capacity, yeah. and be open to, you know, the possibility. Why we don't see collabs with men like how, or like in gospel music, like you see um, yeah. in in secular music? You know, I think it, sometimes it may be just egos. It's a definitely a bad competition out here. We're not, believe it or not, we're not as united as the R&B and the pop music. For whatever really? reason, it's like scratching and surviving. That barrel, that, that thing at the bottom, I don't know what it is. And I've tried. Like, even on release day, I buy everybody's music. I'm a fan of gospel music. When my record came out, I think maybe five artists may have reposted or said something. But it's your basic fans. It's your base, your fan base are the ones. I don't really cater to my peers, which is sad. I hate to say it. I don't, my expectancy of them, I don't expect a pat on the back when I get a top record. Because in their mind, you're my competition. I'm not getting ready to, but that's just. Is that why you've never done anything with Kirk? Kirk has, not, has never called me. He, he, he's seen me on Celebration of Gospel, seen me on the Stellars. Uh, I think Kirk goes for the younger generation, who he thinks is going to carry music. Uh, if you notice, he goes after like the a lot of the Sunday backwards. I think that's kind of like Prince. You know, every yeah. album he has a different, different group one. or a different yeah. Um, yeah. band and what have you. He never has. You know, he, he Prince every album he never repeated uh, yeah. his. And, his and he's looking for the next. You know, one which I get it. That's that just maybe it's calling in the earth. And uh, we, we started our career, you know, I'm two, two decades in the game. Maybe he feels like I don't need the platform, but you know, I see him do, I see him skew more younger people uh, and it's fine. I'm, I'm going to have him to produce something for me in the next five years. I do know that. So I'm keeping my coin stacked. Okay. So you definitely, you want him. Yes, to work. I need him. He's good really? for the culture. He's got the ear. He's good for, he's the best. He's the best. 
Really? Mm -hmm. I would love, uh, uh, I think you and Kim should do something. Kim Burrell? Oh, that would be dope. I talked to her last week. Kim is one of these people who wants everybody to win. Kim would be good. She would push me. I, I, I think that I would love to sit with her because I think that she's really, um, I think she's really misunderstood. And, yeah, and I think that her, I think that it's not so much the things that she has said. I think it's her cadence. Yeah. <laughs> you know. She's very intelligent. <laughs> She's yeah. very intelligent, but it's it's something about her voice. It's something about her voice and her cadence that the drama in it, it has a stab that if a, somebody a else, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have even matter. You know, like when she was yeah. sitting there, she said, and those names that you called, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's something about her cadence. And it wears the people out, but, but it's not. <laughs> but and then if you go back and you really listen to what she said, it wasn't a big deal. You well, know, her what mother, was the... to her, and to her defense, her mother was an educator. So one thing about Kim, unlike a lot of black people, Kim enunciates, mm -hmm. and so I think the way that she enunciates a lot of times can come across all of a as though she's looking down her nose and she's more intelligent and more astute. But that's not it. She is, she's been drilled in her head, I'm sure, to use correct English and to sound intelligent. Kim is a very brilliant being. She really uh, is. And I think people just don't understand her. Uh, but once you sit, and, and, and then Kim talks very fast. So sometimes you can almost feel like, now what did she say again? By the time you ask her what she said, she's a little irritated that, you she's know, this answer. She's already, she's, she's already the the very hyper. And so the cadence thing, what you said, the cadence, you're actually right on point with that. Oh because yeah, her, her cadence, her rhythm, it, it, it's phenomenal. I could just sit and listen to her talk all day. Oh, I love I just, her. I, just, I, 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 I just love her tonation, her phonation, yeah. Yeah, yeah. the rise and the fall, I, yeah. you know. I, I love and her vocabulary. Her. Yeah. Even when she went on Cameron Hall and she said, well, I said that in jest, but I really meant nothing by it. I was just using it. And she said, you know, in our vernacular, and, and she's used, I said, her vocabulary is not your baby. You, but you know what? I Didn't you feel that Tamara tried yes. to, she yes. tried to get like a got you moment. Yes, she kind of played and, with the mean girl. You think so? A little bit. Yeah, when she was like, yeah, well, just share it now. You don't, you don't get no personal than the Tam fan. No, she told you she wanted to have it in a more intimate space. See, she doesn't know these people, and these people are your people. So they're clapping every time she said something that was adverse. You know, when she, you know, challenged or countered, they clapped. And so that's adversarial posture that'll make anybody say, you know, these ain't my people. You, you got me wrong and you won't let me really respond and express myself and help me differentiate and then, between. You know, the, the way, the way that she tried to clap and you know, I love Yogi, but the way that she tried to clap and say, well, she's a friend of mine. Well, no, yeah, you, I you I have just, you just sat here, yeah. you just sat here and you named almost 10 people that are my colleagues yeah. that all Ooh. supposedly had these horrible and negative things to say yeah. about a comment I made. And then you don't want me to, to, to feel that I can properly, you know, re respond or, yeah. or address it. And then you want to try to shut me down and say, oh, well, you this is a friend of mine. And I'm not gonna let you come. So I, I, I really, I didn't like, I, like it. I, I don't want. I did, you know, because I want to like her, but I didn't really want to, you know, accept that that was the yeah. the reality. You know, and she hasn't. She hasn't fully, even though she has her show. I don't think she's really fully processed that the Today Show showed her to the door. You know? <laughs> I feel like it was revenge almost like, I'm gonna show you. You fired me, I got another job. 
But it took her a while. Yeah. It took yeah. her. It, 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 you know, it wasn't, life ain't been no crystal stairs. Right. You know, it took her a little while to work and, you know, to, to make, so, but I get it. But I just, I, I hate that uh, Kim told a mutual friend, she said, oh, I know William, I love William, but, you know, folks felt like, um, I guess because I've been so hard hitting with the blog, they, they, you know, they felt like, well, maybe they won't be able to control because I'm going to, I'm going to ask the hard questions, you know, I'm going to ask, As you, you know, did, do, did you have the Adam for Adam profile? Did you, you know, have a lapse of judgment mm -hmm. um, or, or you know, whatever uh, that, you know, allowed you, and, 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 and so, uh, and that's what makes a real, you know, interview, a real interview, um, yeah. you know, that I, it, it was boring. It was boring sitting, watching Lillian skate around and not really answer <laughs> no hard, you know, serious question at, you know I what I mean? It was to interview her. I, I've, re I've reached out. I reached out and she declined. She'll be ready. She's not ready yet. It's too fresh. It's too. But fresh. she did. She did the other guy. She did what's uh, uh But that's a friend. You know. Well, I'm I saying? was her friend. Well, I'm saying he's not going to really press her. He's yeah. not going to press her. Yeah. I where I'm going to get that the gravamen. See, I know her when she was catching riding the Greyhound coming to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you know, you can't, you know, you can't play with me. That's just like that, you know, that's just like Travis. You know, Travis was staying with Darius. Or Travis and Darius was staying together. You know, they were they were living together and and uh did nobody greater. Well, Darius had written nobody greater. Oh, that's right. I remember but, the, the first public show. But Darius couldn't play. Right. And Travis put the music, you know, too. So it's a lot of them because I'm a church boy and I know the real versus, yeah. you know, you know the, the facade that people want to put up that um, I guess it makes me sort of, uh, for lack of a better word, a threat. I want to ask you this before I let you go. Yeah. What, what, what resolve did you come to within yourself to, um, to do this? I think I had to just think of these people who love me and don't understand me and also the ones who are committed to misunderstanding and misinterpreting uh, just have questions that we may throughout this hour we may answer that and rather it changes their mind or just gives them clarity i feel like i owe that to them uh, because they brought they purchased music they've attended concerts um, and it's like, I want, are you real? Have you been fooling me? Have you been gaslighting me? So when you sit down and you just talk from your heart with a good interviewer like you, uh, a journalist you. at heart who wants to hear the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I think people need that uh, because they need to know that I'm, I'm not a person who's trying to win you over. I'm not, your opinion of me is none of my business. So I think my resolve was, you know what? Drop your inhibitions. Drop your fear, because I had fear, and just go and just speak from your heart and just believe that God is going to really, you know, he's going to show up and he's going to show people what they need to pull the mask off. And I feel like that's what happened. I've read a lot of the comments. I've gotten about maybe 15, 20 text messages about people who just have been really edified and just by the conversation. It was rich. It was loving. It was, um, you know, and it just was no hatred. It was no back and forth. There was no, you know, it was just good industry and ministry conversation. We need more of that. We need more of it and I, I certainly I mean man I really appreciate it and 
um, I, I, I hope that this is, um, you know, just the beginning and yeah. an opportunity for, uh, I, I'm gonna tell you somebody, I would love, I would love to sit across from Leandria. Oh. I would, oh, love to, I would love to, I would love to, we were actually, we were actually, they wanted, Holly wanted to cast me in uh, Preachers of Atlanta uh, and Robert, Robert Hatcher, uh, uh, you know, was just adamant and vehemently um, against it and uh, well I, I just thought it would have made great TV it yes. would have been hot for you know for us to uh, you know you know have a serious conversation you, you know can you behave like this like how you're behaving curse do <laughs> you know smoke <laughs> drink you talking about Lee of course you can yeah, you know what I mean? And it, I just thought it would have been, it would have been good, but you know, everybody is not there. Yeah. And, you, and, you know, know maybe we'll happen. circle back, but it's, it's several, it's several, um, you know, of those, and it doesn't necessarily even have to be stories that I released. Um, they could have been released by somebody else. But I think that somebody that, you know, have you ever walked away from um, uh, a talk show and you, you knew nothing more about the celebrity than that you, was being interviewed yeah. than what you did prior to. Right. And I right. never want an interview to walk away where, you know, I, I, I feel that people know a lot more of Ernest Pugh yeah. than what they knew prior yeah. and sure. what they will know prior to watching the replay. Absolutely. Um, you know, uh, and so that that's what, what it's about. Uh, and if you're not going to do that, and if you don't know, we have had a very eloquent dance, yeah. you know, a, serenade you know i move <laughs> in you know we step back you know come over here twirl here yeah. turn there you know and so but that's what it and a lot of these people they think that oh i can just jump in this game and you yeah. know and do this and it, it's a true gift and it's a true talent and it's a true you know ability yeah. that you know, a lot of them out there, they want it, but you just, it's you no know, joke. sir, no, ma'am, you just don't have it, <laughs> you know, and it <laughs> takes, don't yeah, they don't, they don't, they, you know, they want, they, they're so intrigued by it, and, and, and I can understand the desire, you know, I would love to, to, you know, stand on a stage in an arena packed with people, and you know, hold the mic and you know, put my head back like you do and <laughs> captivate and captivate the people, but that's not my call. You know what but I'm saying? Have, but I, your call is very instrumental too, though. Yes. yes. The person behind the microphone. I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, sir, when you come on the fourth, we'll be in person. And we'll do the um, the podcast, but thank you so very thank you yes, for sir. so so very much. And um, I, I I am you know uh, you was my litmus test, so I'm gonna definitely tell people <laughs> well you can call Ernie <laughs> and, and I can tell you, you. <laughs> you're so right. You can give me that stamp of approval Absolutely. because I do understand Absolutely. that different ones that you know have that. Um, you know, those emotions and that I probably resonate yeah. in, in, in that capacity with. So, um, but I appreciate that. I really do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right, you all. This is uh, Sir William. I, um, I, uh, I don't,
think I put my um, my cash app, uh, um, but y'all know my cash app and my Zelle is dollar sign uh, Sir S I R William, the letter G M C C R A Y, the letter I I I. And um, my um, Zelle is the same at gmail.com. Thank you for, um, for my stars. I don't know if there's anybody else that want to um, send me some stars. I'm really, really appreciative of uh, Ernest Pugh and, um, and his taking um the 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 time and his being transparent um i think that uh i covered uh, uh i believe everything that needed and that i wanted to to cover and i think he answered honestly and truthfully and um was extremely uh transparent um and you know, I I wanted more details on on his situation with Keon, uh, but uh, you know I certainly understand the legality behind that. So uh, I'm really grateful. I really feel good, and I'm appreciative for all of you that tuned in and uh, showed your support. Want to uh, I, I have an anonymous. Uh, a person that was very, very kind and uh, helped with the last minute with the um, with the stand and all of that. And you all being patient and working with us are, are, are sticking um, uh, by me while we were trying to get everything worked out. I am a, appreciative. I am certainly um uh appreciative for that and we'll be doing uh more of this and more lives and i know y'all get on me because um uh, y'all uh uh was uh upset about the the what is it my sunday night live and all of that so anyway um we uh will definitely um, becoming uh, more often and more uh, regularly, and so I thank you all for your compliments and your um, and your support. Um, and hopefully, you uh, got um, um, some enlightenment. Oh, uh, her Hernandez brief. Thank you. Thank you so, 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 so very much. Uh, 500 stars, thank you. Your kindness shall never be forgotten. Uh, thank you. We, I couldn't do this without your, um, you all's love and, and support. So thank you so, um, so very, um, so very much. Uh, uh, share this interview um, certainly share the interview on your platforms um, um, i think ernest did a phenomenal um a phenomenal job i think he was very candid i think he was very open i think he was very very honest um i'm uh, i know that he had some you know some uh, nervous jitters um uh, and there was a lot of opportunities and opposition. There was certainly opposition um, that uh, colleagues and friends and things of that sort was, you know, telling him, are you really going to interview with William McCray? Maybe you should do that. You know, he said this, he said that. Um, and, you know, we kept talking and um, we kept talking through it. And, um, you know, it did, this, was, this was a process. Um, this just didn't happen overnight. Um, but this was a, a process of 
our having conversations, our saying, you know, I heard this, this is what I was told. This is, you know, what, what I thought happened. I operated, um, you know, under this particular guise or uh, under this particular uh, premise. And um, so it was really good. It was really, really good. And thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Worthy. I appreciate that. Thank you. You all, please uh, share uh, on your, uh, on your, you know, pages and, uh, and uh, uh, share it with your, um, with your family and your friends and, you know, your loved ones and people that like gospel music, people that like Ernest. Um, and, you know, so we can walk away and we can, you know, we can come together and we can, you know, be peaceful and we can be truthful and we can be honest and we can be transparent in our most authentic selves. All right. So anyway, I'm going to get off of here. Oh, uh oh. Um, we have been on um, a good little while. So I am going to, um, I'm still learning this, uh, this stand. So, but I'm going to end the live and thank you all so very much for tuning in and um, watching. Um, and certainly, if there's anybody else that want to send some stars, yeah, it ain't too late. Go, yeah, it, it's certainly, uh, it's certainly not, um, it's certainly not uh, too uh, too late for a little bit more love. <laughs> the only thing better than love is some more love. Am I talking right? Okay. All right, you all. So uh, thanks for um, everyone that tuned in. Uh, and thank you for all of the the compliments. Um, for those of you that uh, said and felt that it was a good interview and what have you, I am um, grateful and most appreciative. All right. I'm going, uh, I am going to uh, bid you all a fond farewell until tomorrow. Okay, peace. I'm out.